for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Well, welcome. In this video, I want to show you how to work with uh, table-based page layouts inside of Dreamweaver CS5. Now, tables are not the preferred way to lay out pages. Uh, preferably, pages will always be laid out using um, semantic structural elements in HTML5 or just by using div tags instead of HTML4. But a lot of the existing pages you may work with may already be laid out with tables, or you may have no choice as to whether to lay out with divs or with uh, tables. So this is still an important skill to know, even though you probably won't be creating any websites from scratch um, of your own choice using table-based layouts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to File, New, and I'm going to create myself a new page here. I'm going to select HTML and the doc type, I'm going to choose is HTML5. And I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And you'll see I now have a page layout. Now Dreamweaver's tools up here at the top will allow me to control the view that I'm working in. And the view that I want to work in for this is not code view. It's actually design view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on design there. Now, before we can actually dive in and start working with um, table-based layouts, we need to talk about um, some of the properties that go with a table. And for that, I want to go to the Insert menu, and I'm just going to insert a table onto this page. So I selected Insert, and I'm going to select Table. And after a moment, a dialog box is going to appear, and it's going to ask me for some information about this table. And just as an example, I'm going to go ahead and make this table three rows and three columns. I'm going to say it takes up 800 or 100% of the available screen space, so it's going to be a fluid layout. I could choose pixels and set whatever I want. Actually, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to say this is a 500 pixel table. We also have border thickness, which I'm going to make zero. You should never use HTML borders. You should always, always, always do your borders in CSS. And, then, and we'll see how to do that uh, later on. And then we have two other properties here. We have cell padding and cell spacing. And these are the main two items that I want to look at right now. And just starting off, I want you to remember that cell padding is on the inside of a cell. And cell spacing is on the outside of a cell. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the cell padding to 20. I'm actually going to reverse it here. And I'm going to set the cell spacing to 0. I'm then going to go ahead and click OK. And my table will be created and placed on my page. Now, remember I said padding is on the inside of a cell. So when I click here, you're going to notice that there's 20 pixels of padding all the way around the interior of each one of the cells. Again, if I click over here, notice there's again 20 pixels of spacing inside of the cell. And Dreamweaver's, Dreamweaver's little tool tips here will even show you the amount of padding that is in there. So if I was to come along here and type in um, text, 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 and then maybe hit enter and type more text, you'll see the padding takes place there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and reverse this. I'm going to go ahead and take some of that text out. And instead of having padding on my cell, I'm going to change that to, to spacing. So I'm going to go ahead and point at the bottom of my table here. Now, to make this change, you need to actually select the table itself. Not the cells of the table but the actual table itself. And to do that, you don't just highlight your table. What you do is you're going to point at the bottom edge of your table. And you're going to see that I get this cursor right there. And when I click, now the table itself is selected. And you can see the difference in the way Dreamweaver is showing this to you than when I highlight the cells, just like that. 
Another way to select the entire table is to go to the Modify menu and select Table and choose Select Table. And that's very helpful when you have tables nested inside of tables and you're trying to grab something. So I've selected that table and now my properties down here below are going to show me the properties for the table. You can see I can set the number of rows and columns here. I can choose the row and the column spacing, the width of the table, and set the padding and the spacing, as well as the alignment and applying a class style if I want to. So I said I was going to reverse this. Now remember, there's 20 pixels of padding now inside of each one of these cells. So if I had a continuous row of text, there would be 20 pixels in between the beginning of this text and this edge, and another 20 pixels between this edge and the end of where I can place text here. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 0 and 20. And now you're going to see that the spacing is actually on the outside of the cell. So now there's a total of 20 pixels of spacing between the two items instead of the 40 that would have or that was there when I did 20 pixels of padding and 0 pixels of spacing. Now, you may be thinking, okay, why does that matter to me? Why is it important to know the difference between padding and spacing? And the answer is, it affects the way background colors appear on your table. Let's say that I set the background color for these cells to being blue. You're going to see that when I did that, it filled in the entire cell. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and undo that by going to Edit, Undo Set Background Color. And watch how that will change if I modify this. I'm no longer going to have 20 pixels of padding. I'm now going to have 20 pixels of spacing. And now when I select the cells and change the background color, to that same blue, you're going to see that the cell color changed, but since there's spacing in between the cells, that now assumes the table color. So spacing is always going to have your table color, and padding will always have the color of the cells. If I click on this table overall and change something about the, um, um, oh, let's go ahead, now just take that color off of there. I can click on that. I'm just going to go ahead and select no fill right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my entire table here. And you're going to see that I don't have a property down here to set the table color. So what I'm going to actually do is click on split here so I can go into code view. Now in code view you're going to see I've got the width here, the border and also the cell spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an attribute to this tag and the attribute is going to be BG color. I'll select BG color there and then it's going to allow me to choose the color. In this case I'm going to select red. And then I'm going to go ahead and click over here and you're going to see that my table color became red and that includes the area that was taken up by cell spacing. If I was to come in here again and highlight my cells and change the background color to blue, you will see that the blue fills in again the cell, but not the table. That's still in red. One more example, I'm going to select my table and change this here. I'm going to make the cells padding 20 again and the cell spacing zero. And you're going to see when I make the cell spacing zero that the entire table, since all it is is the cell, the cell padding, takes on that blue color. So that's a primer on the difference between padding and spacing, two very important attributes when we talk about tables. One final thing, when we're setting padding and spacing for a table, we're setting it for an entire table. We can't specify just the top, bottom, left, or right, and we can't just specify the padding and the spacing for a single cell. 
To do that, you have to use CSS. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.